Hey everybody, I hope you guys are all healthy and safe. So I'm out here in the beautiful Hong Kong skyline. So this is a full review of the Xiaomi Mi 10 Pro. I've been using this phone for the past seven days. Before I begin with the review, I want to address something that I've been seeing a lot on social media. And that is that a lot of you guys think this phone is overpriced because Xiaomi is charging 999 euros for this in Europe. It will actually be a little bit cheaper in Hong Kong and in Asia, it will be down to seven, seven, eight hundred bucks. But a lot of you guys seem to think Xiaomi just should not be charging one thousand dollars for a phone. I think that's a little bit unfair. I think you guys are holding Xiaomi's history against it because yes, it's true that previous Xiaomi phones would always sell at several hundred dollars cheaper than whatever Samsung or Huawei is charging. But those phones, like the original Xiaomi Mi Mix or say the Xiaomi Mi 8, they looked like flagships at first glance and on the spec sheets. But when you use them very carefully, you notice that they actually miss some crucial features that separate those phones from a true, true flagship like whatever Samsung was out at the time. And these are usually stuff like a good haptic vibration engine, stereo speakers, wireless charging, or just like a really good camera. So that's how Xiaomi was able to sell those phones at just six, seven hundred bucks because they had cut corners a little bit in some areas. Now it's not a knock against those phones. I actually think those, those phones were really good deals because they offered you about 90% of what you'd get from a Samsung or an Apple or Huawei, but they sell it to you at 60% of the price. And that's a good compromise in my opinion. But with the Mi 10 Pro, Xiaomi is going in a different direction. It is not trying to, to cut minor features here and there just so they can meet a price point for you guys. It's trying to give you every feature possible right now in 2020. And this phone does that for the most part, there's really not many features that you will find in a Samsung Galaxy S20 Ultra or a new iPhone that is not here. In fact, the Mi 10 Pro has several features that many of their current Android flagships don't even have for now. For example, the Mi 10 Pro has a really good and loud stereo speakers. The Huawei P40 Pro doesn't offer that. Mi 10 Pro, P40 Pro, max volume. The Mi 10 Pro supports wireless charging. The Oppo Find X2 doesn't have that. And the Mi 10 Pro's 108 megapixel camera actually does not suffer from the auto focusing issues that have plagued the Samsung Galaxy S20 Ultra's camera. It's actually pretty interesting because the camera here is built by Samsung, but Xiaomi seems to have done a better job of auto focusing. Now, I'm not saying the Mi 10 Pro is automatically better than any, any of the three phones I just mentioned. I'm just saying the Mi 10 Pro can absolutely hang with those phones. If you guys don't like this new direction from Xiaomi, if you want something more reasonably priced, Xiaomi is still offering you that. Get the standard Mi 10, not the Pro, or get the Redmi Note 9S. Okay, let's begin with the review. So I'm just gonna go over the general specs and hardware really quick. This phone has a 6.6 .6 inch OLED screen that refreshes at 90 Hertz. Yes, it is not as fast as zippy as the 120 Hertz panel, but it is still, the animations are still very fluid, very smooth to my eyes. And 90 Hertz is less power hungry than 120 Hertz. So the battery life here on this 4,500 milliamp hour cell is actually better than the battery life in the Samsung Galaxy S20 Ultra and the Oppo Find X2 Pro. Now around the back, it's a glass finish, but this is a matte uh, coating and I really like it. It does not attract fingerprints at all really and although it makes the phone a little bit slippery it just it looks so nice in the hand and i really like this white color i have in which when light shines off of it you see a little uh, pink reflection like a little pink light now the phone has that typical glass sandwich look with a curved glass back and front the screen is just about as bezels as you can get right now in 2020 and it looks really nice to my eyes Oh, and the hole punch cutout houses a 20 megapixel selfie camera. So I don't know the exact nits of brightness of the Mi 10 Pro screen, but I'm using it outside right now and I can see the screen perfectly fine. So I'm guessing this is above 450. Overall max brightness is good. Viewing angles are pretty good. Now around the back, it's a quad camera setup headlined by 108 megapixel camera. Now this camera, as I mentioned, it's developed by Samsung, but Xiaomi seems to have done a better job of fine tuning it and it is a really good camera. It captures really great images during the day and low light performance is surprisingly good. Not as good as the Huawei P40 Pro, but definitely can hang with any other phone. Now, a major reason for that is because the image sensor size here is relatively large at one over 1.33 inch. Now, the P40 Pro still has a larger sensor, but 
this is the second largest image sensor on the market right now. I think on par with the Galaxy S20 Ultra. I'll show you more photo samples later. Let's move on to the other cameras first. Now, while the other new Androids this year are using the periscope zoom lens, Xiaomi has moved in a different direction. It's using two telephoto lenses here. You have a 12 megapixel portrait telephoto lens. That's for two times portrait shots. And then an eight megapixel long telephoto lens that offers hybrid zoom up to 10 times. At 5X, it's just about lossless, and at 10X, it is almost lossless. Now, Xiaomi uses data from both of these lenses along with the 108 megapixel camera to produce a digital hybrid zoom that can get all the way up to 50X. Now, for my testing, which I already tested thoroughly in another video, this phone's 10 times and 20X zoom actually beats Huawei P40 Pro's 10X and 20X zoom. It's only when you move up to 30X or 40X, 50X, does the P40 Pro really pull ahead slightly. And finally, at the bottom, you have a 20 megapixel wide angle camera. Unfortunately, I find the position of this wide angle camera a little bit weird because it's so low on the phone that my fingers always get into the frame. But you know, that's just something I have to train myself to move my fingers out of the way. And once you do that, this wide angle lens is pretty good. You're still getting a relatively detailed shot with not a lot of barrel distortion. Now inside Mi 10 Pro, it's a Snapdragon 865. And on my unit, it has eight gigs of RAM with 256 gigs of internal storage. So with these specs, you already know performance is not an issue. Now in terms of software, there's Android 10 here with MIUI 11 on top. Now I've made a couple of videos about MIUI 11 already. For the most part, I really like it. I would rank it probably number three in my all my Android skin rankings. So overall, MIUI 11 is very lively, very colorful. I like the aesthetics. It's full of customization and a lot of these cute little touches. For example, whenever you exit out of the camera app or settings app, you notice that when the app icon returns back to the home screen, there's a little animation. It moves a little bit. And whenever you uninstall an app, the app will actually explode into bits as it's getting deleted off your phone. And because Mi 10 Pro has a really good haptic vibration engine, when that exploding animation happens, the phone will rumble a little bit too. So it's like really nice little touches that you don't get from a lot of phones. And many other phones, when you uninstall an app, the app just disappears. Now let's look at the camera app interface. Um, it, I find it slightly complicated to use. As you see, there are a lot of modes to cycle through. And one of the problems I've come across is the zoom button is still not as responsive as I like. You notice when I press it, there's a slight delay. And when I'm trying to zoom sometimes, sometimes I'll accidentally switch modes when I'm not trying to switch modes, when I'm just simply trying to zoom. Now general photography with the main camera is really good. It shoots pixel binned 27 megapixel images, but you can shoot 108 megapixels if you like. But I really would not recommend shooting a 108 megapixel unless you have really, really great lighting. I'm talking about like a perfect sunny day and you're outside. Otherwise, when you try to shoot a 108 when the lighting is less than ideal, you just get more noise than usual. Now the wide angle camera has a 117 degree field of vision and it is really good during the day, but at night it does suffer a little bit from, you know, noisiness and soft details, which is a problem in just about every wide angle camera out there, except the one on the Huawei P40 Pro. Now, unfortunately you cannot shoot a wide angle camera with a night mode. As you can see here, I'm in night mode now and there's just no option to go into the wide angle camera. You can shoot 1X, 2X, all the way up to 10x i believe yeah you can all the way up to 10x with night mode but i would have liked to seen night mode in wide angle camera that's available on a lot of phones and it really helps improve photography now as i also said the zooming capabilities of this phone is really good considering that it doesn't have a periscope zoom lens um especially during the day if you have good lighting but even at night right now you see i am zooming in 20 21x right now at night and this image turned out pretty nice and pretty sharp that sign all the way over there so 21x and this is low light situation so if you're shooting this during the day you get an even better image as you can see from some of these samples here i also want to highlight the portrait mode and the macro mode of this camera i think they're both very strong for portrait mode xiaomi uses that 12 megapixel 2x telephoto zoom lens to produce a really respectable depth of field now, as you can see, edge detection is really good and you can adjust the bokeh effects in real time by changing the f-stop. Now, as you can see from more samples here, 
The Mi 10 Pro captures really good bokeh portrait images. Now as for the macro mode, the Mi 10 Pro uses the wide angle camera to take macro shots and they are pretty good. You can get pretty close into the subject as you can see here again from these samples. Now video performance is really good too, especially during the day. You're going to get really stable, really smooth footage with excellent dynamic range. At night, we'll check it out right now. I think at night it's still pretty good, but it's not going to be as stable as an iPhone. You're going to see some micro jitteriness. Now one of the weaknesses of the Mi 10 Pro's video camera is that once you've begun recording, you cannot switch to the wide angle camera, but you can zoom in all the way up to 10x, but you can't switch to wide angle camera and that's a bummer too. So selfie camera here is a 20 megapixel lens and for the most part, I'm, I'm quite happy with the selfies, but you know, I don't really take selfies that much. So I'm not a selfie expert, but you be the judge by looking at these samples here. Okay, so I'm outside a dark alley right now. As I mentioned earlier, the Xiaomi Mi 10 Pro has a pretty good low light camera because of that really large 1 over 1.33 inch sensor. So we'll just take a shot right here into this dark alley. So this is just a standard auto shot. And I'm looking at both images here by the Mi 10 Pro and the P40 Pro. Now, the Mi 10 Pro's image is actually technically better lit, but the P40 Pro produced a better image because the colors are more accurate. Huawei's image processing is just a little bit ahead, but the Mi 10 Pro's low light performance is really good considering how dark that alley is. Battery life, as I mentioned, is excellent because this screen is only 90 hertz and not 120 hertz. The 4,500 million hour cell here goes longer than the 5,000 million hour cell in the Samsung Galaxy S20 Ultra. That phone, the S20 Ultra, Sometimes it could last me all day, sometimes it could not. The Xiaomi Mi 10 Pro almost always lasts me all day. Even on very heavy days, I'm confident in knowing that I can step out in the morning, be out till 1 a.m. and still the phone will have like at least 15% battery life. It's not like dangling to life at like 5%. So overall, I'm really liking the Mi 10 Pro. I think it's very well-rounded, even more so than the Samsung Galaxy S20 Ultra and the Huawei P40 Pro. Now, obviously, the P40 Pro would be my favorite phone and the best well-rounded phone were not for the fact that there's a Google problem with the phone. So because of that, then the Mi 10 Pro is probably gonna be more enticing to my SIM card because I have full access to all my Google apps and Gmail and YouTube studios in here on the Mi 10 Pro. The Samsung Galaxy S20 Ultra is also really good, but that phone's camera still has focusing issues that just get on my nerves. So to me, the two best overall phones right now are the Oppo Find X2 Pro and the Xiaomi Mi 10 Pro. And if you're someone who needs wireless charging, then the Mi 10 Pro offers what the Find X2 Pro will not. But both of these phones are really good. But if you really compare it to you, the Mi 10 Pro is also a little bit cheaper. So that's about it for my review of the Xiaomi Mi 10 Pro. Thanks for watching. Stay safe. Stay healthy.